cool fantasy self using multifunctional pomades to contour, to do their brows, to line their lips, to do their eyeshadow, and then layer powders on top. And then I could go with beautiful, shiny things I already own. Like, there's just like, I'm like, mm, that's that, like, I can just ease into that um, fantasy version of myself really quickly. Hey y'all, welcome to Clove Room. It's another Sephora sale video, and as the Sephora sale rages on, uh, <laughs> I wanted to come out with another video during the sale that wasn't focused on what, what I was buying or a haul. I think, even though I think that type of content is perfectly fine to post, I just think it's also good to have other things that are just encouraging you to be mindful if you do shop sale or if you are trying to stay strong on a no or low buy. So today it's just a classic little video. It's a classic shop my stash for things I would maybe be interested in purchasing from the Sephora sale. I kind of let myself run a little wild on Sephora.com and I watched a couple of Sephora saving event recommendation videos to get me in the mood. Um, I. You, even though the sale is not as tempting as, to me this year as it usually is, I did still get those kind of like, ooh, I want to buy something feelings in my stomach, when, especially when the creators talked about a few products. So I went um, hog wild <laughs> on the Sephora website and I managed to add 11 items to my cart that total $479 before tax. <laughs> With the discount I would get, I am a VIB Rouge. Hair flip. I'm just kidding. I'm not super proud of that. With the discount I get, I save 95, or I would save $95.80 on that subtotal. So my total before tax would be the bargain price of $383.20. I am not buying any of that, however, because I am on a no buy. And if you are somebody who really enjoys the beauty space, loves being in the online beauty community, but sometimes struggle with overspending or just want to put some more conscious consumerism content on your subscription feed, I would love it if you would subscribe. We have a pretty good time here, I think. And give this video a like if you do enjoy it. Either way, it really helps me in the wild, wild west of the YouTube algorithm. Comment below um, any thoughts, feelings on the products I'm talking about or this for sale in general, and I think we can go ahead and get into it. So I am fresh faced today. I only have on a little skincare. I'm actually, I needed a new face sunscreen, so I bought the e.l.f. Woe Glow from um, Target when I was there earlier, and it's like really, I, I haven't tried the uh, thing it's duping. I haven't tried the super goop glow screen, I believe it's called. I have not ever tried that. So um, I think it's like settled in now, but when I put it on, I was like, oh my gosh, I was kind of shocked at, like it didn't really cover anything, but it definitely had a little bit of like a light yellow pigment to it. I will say I am on HRT and I've been on HRT for like eight months now, I believe. I used to be combo skin and have sort of like dry patches sometimes out here, but mostly normal on the perimeter and have a pretty oily nose and forehead. After being on HRT as long as I have been, I my oils are gone, uh, which is something that can happen. A lot of people who are assigned male at birth have that experience with HRT. So I think if I had used that elf sunscreen before and I was about to go in with all the products I know I'm about to go in now, it may have been a bit of a slip and slide, but my skin um, kind of drank all that elf moisturizing glow up. So the first product I have in my cart, or rather, I ordered all of these products in order of uh, application because I am going to apply all of the items I shopped my stash for. First product I have is the Patrick Ta Major Brow Lamination Gel. Now, I haven't had gr a great experience before with the Patrick Ta brand. I've just tried one thing, and it's the Cream Powder Blush Duo in Chiso LA. I despise it. <laughs> it's not just a color thing. It's actually, I really don't enjoy the formulas. I know a lot of people love those blush duos, but the cream just looks, and even the powder too, but I, I it takes a lot for me not to get on with a cream blush, even if it's not my favorite formula, but every time I put that blush on, I did not enjoy the look it gave on my skin. It just looked so heavy and like makeup-y and it was just odd. So I've kind of sworn off the brand because I feel like it's pretty expensive for what you're getting. 
packaging included. It's just not my favorite. However, there's something so alluring about this brow lamination gel. And I've heard good things about it. I know, um, I think Hannah Louise Poston really likes it. Other influencers have talked about how much they love it. It has this really like, <laughs> I've used this video, or I've used this word a lot in recent videos, but it has this like sexy little applicator. It's like really spiky and like almost giving that, uh, oh gosh, what's her name? Isamea, like it's almost giving Isamea S&M brow gel. <laughs> Something about it that's really alluring to me. However, it is quite expensive at $27 for something that I would probably run through in a couple months. I do my brows every day. I honestly hate that I'm on camera right now without my brows. Um, I don't really go, it, it's the one thing I will do, even if I don't put any complexion make makeup on, any blush or anything, I will do my brows before I leave the house because I just feel like it really frames my face and all of that good stuff. So maybe one day I'll try the Patrick Tall Lamination Gel. Not right now though. I almost bought it as my replacement product when I used up the NYX Brow Glue, but as I've talked about before in my no buy check-in video, which I can link, I just don't want to be spending a lot of money on makeup right now, even if it's within the rules of my no buy. Like I'm kind of trying to make, you know, the least aesthetic purchase I can, which is why instead of the brow elimination gel, I pulled all these products Why am I look, looking at my collection. Um, instead of the brow lamination gel, I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Brow Lift. This is only six bucks, I believe. Similar vibe. your hand if you're scared. I hate filling my brows in on camera. I hate it. So I don't really know how good they look, but this is usually where I stop. I think I sometimes get them a little bit thicker, but today that's fine. The next product, and this is going to kind of be a combo. So I've shopped my stash for two items to replace two items that I really, one especially, I'm thinking of that onto my Christmas list. So the first one I'll talk about is the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette. I did not care about this when I saw this being released. I was like, not interested. I don't need the pomade and the powders. Doesn't really aesthetically appeal to me. I'm not sure about the multi-purpose aspect of it. Just not for me. And then I saw Khaki of Khaki Reviews Beauty talk about it in just like a, I think a trying on makeup video, but then she also had it in her recommendations video. And it just looks so nice. There's something about like that matte neutral palette that's so seductive to me you'll see there's another one that i really would like in a second and now that i'm thinking about it i'm like ooh, fantasy style self using multifunctional pomades to contour to do their brows to line their lips to do their eyeshadow and then layer powders on top and then it could go with beautiful shiny things I already own like there's just like I'm like mm, that's that like I can just ease into that um, fantasy version of myself really quickly and the other matte palette that I am desiring a lot less than the Danessa Myricks is a makeup by Mario palette not the one that everyone everyone is losing their absolute <laughs> minds about the etherealized palette like, I have so many friends so many people I follow who are either excited to get that palette finally or agonizing over <laughs> maybe not being able to get it or not wanting to spend the money to get it. I have no interest in that palette. I don't know. I just don't. Um, I really want the Master Mattes palette that's much older than that and is part of the permanent collection. So this is something I could buy at any point in the year. Although it, it has been sold out for like a really long time up until this year. That's another palette I really really would like. One of the things I shopped my stash for is, of course, the Viseart 
neutral mattes. I have the petite version. I bought this not too long before my no buy and I have already, like I use this almost every day. Every time I do an eye look, I at least reach into one of these shades. Phenomenal palette. It makes all the rest of my matte eyeshadows kind of fall flat. Like I used an Odin's eye palette I have for the first time in a while yesterday and I did not like the eye look and the structure of it until I layered the Viseart matte formula over it. And then I was like, okay, that's much better. It's just so beautifully blurring, it's buildable, and it just does what you want it to. If you want it to be soft, it'll do that. If you want it to build, it'll do that. It's phenomenal. And it, this is a beautiful all matte palette. It's got warm and cool. I think the only thing that the Makeup by Mario, and even the Vanessa Myricks, but the thing that keeps the Makeup by Mario on my mind is that it has a little bit more of that like, warm cinnamon mustard vibe. This really does go pretty neutral or cool, except for maybe this like kind of terracotta brick shade in here. So that's the only thing about the Makeup by Mario that stays on my mind. I just can, and I swatched it recently at Sephora. It did feel really nice. I can't imagine I would enjoy the formula more than Viseart. Viseart is also, I think, a good substitute for the Danessa Myricks. But there is a part of the Danessa Myricks I can't get with the Viseart. There's this, like, seductive cream pomade element. Um, and I don't really have anything like that because I don't really use things like that, which should maybe be a sign that I don't need to buy the um, Danessa Myricks groundwork palette. The thing I have that kind of builds the structure she's talking about and is a liquid cream pomade shadow is this Ilia liquid shadow. Um, it's in the shade Cork. It's just like a very cool tone taupe matte liquid eyeshadow. And I use it as like an eye base primer all in one. I find this is awful over powder, like really awful. And it's also awful if you use too much. I actually almost decluttered this um, a while ago, but I found out to make it work, it's a really lovely base if you just use it as your primer and you use like a pretty small amount. So I'm gonna be doing just a really basic eye look. I am actually going to a Halloween party <laughs> tonight. Uh, my first Halloween party and I don't even know how long. And I thought all year I was gonna do something really makeup-y for like Halloween costume. And I'm actually just gonna be <laughs> Countess Luann in the infamous Roni be cool. Don't be all uncool scene. <laughs> Maybe I'll insert pictures and vi video or whatnot here of what that costume ended up being. Part of, most of the reason is that it's a pretty easy costume because I'm just wearing a sports bra that I already have and bike shorts. And all I had to buy for it was a robe and I've been wanting a white robe because I don't have a robe right now. So it was kind of the perfect costume because the thing I needed to buy for it will actually function past the costume, which was helpful. So I'm just gonna do a really simple all matte eye look and I will get back to you in just a second. like the world's most simple all matte eye look, but I really like how it turned out. Um, very easy. The Ilia, I actually haven't used the Ilia with the Viseart shadows yet, but I think everything looks really nice, looks really blurred. Um, I do find this is a good base, again, as long as you don't use eye primer. So my, so I'm just really showing myself, I think that I definitely don't need either of those palettes, especially the Makeup by Mario. The Danessa Myricks one, I still think could be cool. I have felt it and swatched it in Sephora and it is really sizable. Like I like how big it is. When I first saw it, I think one of my qualms was how quick you would go through those multi-purpose creams or pomades if they're typical eyeshadow pans, but they're pretty sizable. And I don't know, I think I may put that on my Christmas list, but I also just like may not. I really do love my Viseart palette and I'm not really doing that much with pomades. So that one may be further research, but definitely for now, and through my no buy, I do not need to buy it for myself and I feel pretty good about that. Next, the Say Glowy Super Gel in the Star Glow shade. So like the lighter champagne-y 
pearl one. I have very good luck with Say. I know some people don't love the brand, some people don't have the best luck with Say products. I have never hated a Say product that I've tried. I've usually really, really enjoyed them, actually. And there's actually another Say product on this list that also is a complexion product. So I have felt this in Sephora. It feels really nice. It feels like a super light gel, but it does, when you swatch it, give you a really, really pretty, pretty glow. And that is absolutely the type of product I would use all the way up. I love products like that. I have no doubt that I would enjoy that product a lot. However, I know I would enjoy that product a lot because I have a lot of products like that. I'm gonna talk about like a more sort of shiny um, shimmer goo in a second. I'm gonna layer them. But to shop my stash for this one, I actually went with the Rare Beauty uh, Illuminating Primer. This is one I've been using more frequently since I used up my Glossier Future Dew. Like I mentioned, my skin is a lot drier right now because of the cold weather, because of HRT. So after my skincare, where I use moisturizers and serums and such, I usually still prime with almost like a moisturizer-like product or an oil, just hydration product before I go in with maybe even like a glowy shimmer goo because I do find my skin benefits from it because it is pretty dry, honestly. I'm gonna be honest, I think I would like to say one better. I don't have anything to write home about this. It's a sort of similar texture. It doesn't feel as hydrating. It doesn't have as much of that, like there's just one shade of this and it's not really a shade. I think the Say leaves a little bit more, has a little bit more like base pigment, leaves a little more pigment behind, all of that good stuff. But still, this is really nice. I already own it. I have a mini, so I don't think it's gonna take very long to go through. Layers well under makeup, makes a nice moisturized base, and I'm happy to use it up during the snow buy. And I think this will be a wonderful substitute for the Say Star. The Say Glowy Super Gel. Oh, and Star Glows. Like, where did Star come in? <laughs> And my skin does drink this up really, really quickly, I will say. If you are wanting a primer that gives you more of that like really shiny, dewy base, I don't think this is it. I think this is almost just like a priming moisturizer type product because I used a pump or two and it's already disappeared into my skin. My skin feels more hydrated, feels a little bit nicer. I wouldn't repurchase this. I don't have incredible things to say about, honestly, either of the Rare Beauty primers. I'm almost done with the pore diffusing one, actually. Let me use that one real quick. Oh my god, did I just finish it on camera? Oh my god. Wow. Exciting things, y'all. Exciting things happening today. Yeah, no more is pumping out, and I went all the way to the top. Ah! So this is the pore diffusing primer from Rare Beauty. I also find it incredibly average, but it's been a goal for the entire year for me to use this up, finally. So that feels awesome. Glad we got to do that on camera. Again, that being said, I don't really recommend these rare beauty primers, but that was that was fun. That was a fun little side quest. All right. Next product. <laughs> Next product. If you want to make fun of me for, I absolutely encourage it. <laughs> so Kosas <laughs> has a product called the Glow Ivy. I don't know if there's like a longer name for that a longer, yes, the Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Illuminating Enhancer. Of course there's a longer name for it. Why wouldn't makeup companies have superfluous names? This product has horrible reviews. Like, I don't think I've seen anybody, anybody like it. And the reviews, because basically this is like Kosas's answer to, a spoiler alert, what I'm gonna shop my stash for, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Floss Filter. But like, it's clean, and it's kosis, and it's vitamins, which I don't know how you get vitamins in a primer, but they got vitamins in a primer. And I thought it'd be like, like when it came out, I was like, okay, that's a smart release. I'm sure the kosis girlies will eat that up. The kosis girlies threw that up. Like, they did. Like, people who typically love kosis' products, who ride for the brand, who've done sponsorships with the brand, were like, this is bad. <laughs> like, this is disgusting. Like... I, I heard a lot that there is like literal, and I swatched it at Sephora, it, like it's almost like a physical exfoliant feeling from like all the like glitter in it. And when you put it on, it's glittery and it really emphasizes dry patches. And still, 
there's something like and and I will say my own history with Kosas, I've used up one of their foundations, I've used up a concealer, I'm on my way to hitting pan on their powder, which is actually, spoiler alert, going to be a part of this video. I still have never loved, I've, I've used up a brow pencil from Kosas. I still have not ever loved or felt like any of that was really worth the price of what I paid for it. I, for most of those, prefer the Glossier equivalents to it. Like I've always connected and enjoyed Glossier as a brand more than I have Kosas, which I think is somewhat of an unpopular opinion. I think a lot of people think of brands like Kosas and Merit replacing Glossier for them. I don't personally. And I haven't had the best track record with Kosas products, even though I continue to use them up, which is great, but it's kind of funny. I am not opposed to like a really intense highlighter. I don't need highlighters to look like a glow from within. I actually kind of enjoy if they look like a glow from a spotlight and the sky or alien slut, as Teresa is dead would say. I enjoy that. So I think part of the reason I was in, or I am interested is just like, I kind of like the idea of Hollywood Flawless Filter, but make it gritty and like make it like glittery. Like there's something about that that I'm kind of like, I don't hate it. All of that to say, I just have a fascination with this product. I really want to try it, but I have so many shimmer goos. <laughs> I have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I'm actually really close to being done with. I'm very excited. Finally, at least be done with one shimmer goo. I have the Oric Glow Lust. I have the Elf Halo Glow, and I just do not need another <laughs> liquid shimmer goo at all. So maybe one day I'll try the Kosas. I probably just shouldn't, because again, I've heard horrible things, etc., etc. Curiosity may kill the cat eventually on this one, but not right now, not for my no buy. I will just use my Charlotte's Hollywood Flawless Filter for Superstar Youth Glow. Next product that is in my fake Sephora cart. I guess the cart is real, but me acting on the cart is not what's real. The Say Glowy Super Skin Lightweight Hydro Bounce Serum Foundation. Say, I wish you stuck another claim in that name. I just don't know what this is supposed to do. <laughs> Again, I really like Say. I really like their complexion products. I've heard this foundation is insanely dewy. I like not only dewy, but again, my skin's really dry right now. So I would love to try this. However, I have. I keep reaching where the products normally are in my collection, but I was thought I was being smart and pulled them before this video. So they're to the left of me, not the right of me. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that by the end of the video. I have the wonderful Glossier Stretch Foundation. Now, I don't think this is as dewy as the Say. A lot of people say this is really dewy. I think it's just really hydrating. I think it gives a lot of moisture to the skin. I don't think that necessarily translates to dewy on me. I mean, I still use the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter with it. Again, my skin's really dry right now though. This came out actually on my birthday <laughs> this year <laughs> and Bought it right before my no buy. Actually bought it on the day it came out on my fucking birthday, as Ali and AJ would say. And I have fallen in love with this. I know it's gotten some mixed reviews. I don't, I like, I know that not everyone who's tried it really loves it. I, here's my thing. I usually do not get along with liquid foundations. Usually they look really heavy on me. Usually they're way too much coverage. They're mask-like. This is not that at all. It looks just like skin that gives me Kind of the max coverage I would want from a foundation product, which is a pretty strong medium. I think it goes over some of the texture and shaving scars and bumps I have on my cheek pretty well. It lasts all right. I'm not saying it's a marathon foundation that'll last all day, but it still looks pretty good at the end of the day, fades gracefully, goes well with other products. I, used, I mixed Future Dew in with it while I still had that, looked really good with that, layers well with things. I adore it. It's my favorite foundation I've ever tried. Again, that's going for the one who hates foundation. I will say, I don't think this applies super great with the brush. I think hands or sponge are the way to go. I do not like the way, like I really hate applying foundation with my hands. It's not my favorite sensorial sensation. Sensorial sensation. 
Is that a phrase that makes sense? We're gonna say it is. And this I will also say, it's not a serum foundation. It's like a lightweight gel moisturizer almost is what I would compare it to. And I was worried when I got it, I was like, I don't love like that thick of a texture, even though it's like whiffed and pretty light, it's still pretty thick for something I, for a complexion product, I usually enjoy more of a serum texture. When you apply this to the skin, it just melts right in. It looks like nothing on the skin. I don't know. I think someone in Glossier's testing group for complexion products is like my skin twin in texture and needs and wants because I have not ever hated a Glossier complexion product, except for that liquid bronzer, because that is bad. And I'm in the shade light one. I should add, you need so little of this. Um, I didn't even do a full pump on here. And sometimes I don't even use like the half the pump I pump out because it is really stretches. I mean, this is the stretch foundation. It's based on the stretch concealer. This will stretch across your skin. You do not need a lot of product. It can look heavy if you use too much product or just kind of look like the product has nowhere to go. So I would say use less than you think you need and you're gonna get a really nice medium coverage. I would say you can also shear it out. I mean, with any product, but if you wanna shear it out, you can definitely get like more of a light coverage if that is what you desire. So that's the Glossier Foundation. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Tower 28 concealer. I don't have a concealer that I'm even interested in fake buying from the Sephora sale. my Sephora card is a very expensive contour, really more of a brontour. The Westman Atelier Face Trace Cream Contour Stick in Biscuit. I've wanted to try Westman Atelier for a while. I love the aesthetic of the brand. I've heard great things about the products. It looks really, it looks really fun. <laughs> um, and I got to see the packaging recently when I was in Sephora. So luxe, so lovely. That magnet, mm. Love it. But one step I've really been enjoying lately is doing a cream bronzer movement. Even if I'm going to be putting on a cream bronzer or I'm going to be putting on another powder sculpting bronzing product, I have really been enjoying doing a base of a cream bronzer. Some contours, if they're too, too gray, can not look great or just look really unnatural on me. So I do prefer something a little bit more of, like I said, a bronzer, something that has some coolness, it has some sculpting ability, but is a little bit warmer than a traditional contour for my skin tone. So I actually have something that's very similar to the Westman Atelier stick. I haven't seen these shades side by side, but from swatching Biscuit IRL and seeing it in use in other folks' videos, I can say it's pretty similar to the vibes of the M Cosmetics stick um, the So Soft Stick in Terra. In Cosmetics, it's not a brand I support anymore. Uh, Michelle Fawn has said some things that make me uncomfortable. But I am very close to being done with this stick. Um, there's no way I think is a great opportunity for me to finish it. And when I'm done, I will... I may try like the Ritual Defeat one that um, Tom, my friend Homeless Tom, was using in there. They have a great cream contour video that I'm sure y'all have seen. But if you haven't, you should go watch it because they put a lot of time in it. Um, that one, it does look like it be a little bit more dead gray on me, but it looks really, really like rosy and yummy. But I think when I am done with this and I'm done with my no buy, I will likely buy the Westman Atelier eventually because that one just looks right up my alley. For this one, I just like to go in with a stipple brush on the stick. I don't like to draw on the stick. The M Cosmetics So Soft Sticks are actually very, very pigmented. I just draw a little and then blend it in with this stipple brush. Next product in my little Sephora cart. The Simi Hayes <laughs> blush in Red Moon. I have no interest in the Simi Hayes brand. I think the packaging kind of looks like if Forever 21 started to make a brand in 2013 and decided to charge 
a crazy amount for it. Reading the backstory of the brand, it's kind of just like Nepo Baby Project <laughs> vibes, which, which in the year of our Lord 2023 is more annoying than it is, you know, fun camp vibes. <laughs> I don't really want to support this brand. I mean, nothing like truly against the brand. It's just kind of like, there's so many great makeup companies out here and daddy bought me a makeup brand is like not the vibe <laughs> and it's really expensive it is insanely expensive in this forever 21 compact is our, our two blushes a blush duo which i guess is nice and the color i swatched it in sephora and it was shockingly a great color it was beautiful it was like this really on the like dialed in brown red color it looked like it would be warm, but there was a little bit of coolness in it. And it wouldn't pull too red on the skin, but it would sort of give like chic, sun-kissed aesthetic vibes, but not like sunburn. Just like you're flirting with the sun. <laughs> it looked really nice, the color did. And the formulas felt, I mean, they felt nice, but this is $42 and I nothing about the product said $42. This was before my no-buy when I saw that. I was like, do I buy this? And I was like, no, I don't buy this $42 Nepo Baby blush. So I bought the Phytosurgeons Sublimate blush. From what I remember of seeing it in real life, Red Moon might be a little bit more in between Sublimate from Phytosurgeons and Exothermic. I kind of wish I had just gone with Exothermic because it has more brown and neutrality in it. And this is a little bit more like spice cherry jam vibes. I do like it. I, I really love Vital Surgeons as a brand is like the opposite <laughs> feelings that I have of Simi Hayes. Ran by lovely people, they make really innovative stuff and very fairly priced. Like if anything, the prices should be reversed on these two items because this formula is really special. However, I do find this one a little bit harder and a little bit more stampy than the other blushes from Phytosurgeons. I think I've had this experience before in other blush ranges, the Salt New York one specifically, where it's a formula I really enjoy, but when I get a more red-based shade, it's just a little bit harder to blend out. I'm guessing that's because of the red pigments. So it's still workable. It's like not a disaster or anything, but it's something I reach for a little bit less just because it's not as blendable as um, Condensate and Eva Evaporate, which I also own from the Phytosurgeons line. But anyway, we are going to use this today. I'm just going to use it on my sponge, I think, and blend this in. Next, we're going to talk about, I've already talked about this on my channel. I'm definitely putting this on my Christmas list. I have a crush on it. I want it to be my friend. I want it to be my, oh my God. It is crazy how far the squirrels can jump in Atlanta. Side note. Hourglass ambient lighting edit unlocked palette. It's the Hourglass holiday palette. Um, I want the lightest one, the jellyfish one. It just looks so pretty. How many more times are going to talk about this? It just looks so pretty. I swatched it in store. The powders feel... Mm, like, the powders feel so good. The colors look beautiful. There's a really bold highlight in it. There's two beautiful blushes. There's a bronzer. There's two finishing powders. And they just feel incredible. The packaging's really cute. I think I would get a lot of use out of it. I have... Like, I think I would use every shade in that palette. I want one. And I've never bought one before. I've never bought an hourglass palette, ho holiday palette, and I kind of want this to be the year. However, I can't buy it for myself because I want to know buy. So I'm going to put it on my Christmas list. Until then, though, I have... Oh, God. Other... I have my own hourglass palette. If we all put these all in the rows of three, there's actually only five. Well, there's five compacts, but this is a dual pan, so technically six pans in this. So to dupe the vibes of the Hourglass palette, I'm going to be using my beloved Gucci Powder Bronzer. I'm really trying to hit pan on this soon. In 01. Uh, to dupe the Hourglass blushes. These don't feel as nice, but they are really pretty and they're much cheaper. Um, the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blushes. I have Goldie Cassis, which is a little bit more, well not a little bit more, it's a lot more purple, a little bit more cool toned. This is would be really nice on olive skin, I think. And Shimmery Rose, which is a more typical pinky blush. These are glowy blushes, kind of the vibe of the Hourglass ones. Not as elegant, I don't think, but we'll lie to ourselves because we are not purchasing from the Sephora sale, right? 
And then I got out my one powder highlighter. Um, I have another eyeshadow I actually use a lot as a powder highlighter. But this is my one actually meant to be a powder highlighter, powder highlighter. It's the Fenty Kilowatt highlighter in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. This side is kind of more soft highlighter, so I thought this side could kind of help me dupe the, side, the sort of glowy finishing powders that are in the Hourglass palette. This side is a lot more of an intense highlighter, so I thought that could dupe the kind of strobe light one. Different color, this is a little bit more neutral, warm-leaning pearl, and the one in the Hourglass palette that I would buy is a little bit more cool-toned. So again, there's reasons I should buy this palette, right? It's the one that's hardest not to buy, I will say. Like, I really want that Hourglass palette, and I'm hoping Santa Claus comes through for me. And then also, for an actual more matte fit finishing powder, I thought I would get out my Kosas Cloud Set. I pretty, pretty much use this every day. This is not my favorite powder of all time. I'm not as in love with it as most other folks who use it, but I do want to use it up. Again, that's my thing with Kosas. I get the product. It's okay. It's not my favorite. I think it's a little bit overhyped, and I use it up. So continuing that proud tradition. So I'm going to go do a bunch of powder products real quick. All right, I added all those cheek products. I then just finished the rest of my face up. Obviously made the eye look a little bit more intense. Um, that's just with that Viseur palette. And then I did add a pretty sheer layer of glitter from Kleidos Escape Pod, tie lined with Victoria Beckham black eyeliner, Glossier mascara, and then just outlined my lips with Makeup Forever Wherever Walnut. Also some setting spray was involved, some blending. Did you want my forehead lines a little bit more? All right, last product I want to talk about. Oh wait, actually, no, it's not. I do want to add in, I also was using my Fenty highlighter to, as a replacement, a shop my stash replacement for the Rare Beauty highlighter, the powder highlighter, the famous Rare Beauty powder highlighter. I'm still interested in trying this, although I feel like if I get the Hourglass palette for Christmas, I may end up not getting the Rare Beauty just because that does have a really intense, sparkly highlighter in it. But I do have an interest in trying the Rare Beauty. Again, I love a really intense highlighter. <laughs> so I would love to try the Rare Beauty one. Last product we're actually going to talk about is the Milk Odyssey Hydrating Non-Sticky Lip Oil Gloss. Let me say that name one more time. Milk, the name of the company, will allow that. Odyssey, kind of fluffy marketing language, but sure, I'll go with you. Hydrating. Okay, you got one claim. Non-sticky two claims and also like that's not a good name for something like to just be like oh and it's not sticky like whatever lip okay it's a lip product oil okay it's a lip oil gloss <laughs> okay it's an oil gloss it's a non-sticky lip oil gloss it's all of those words but none of those words because seo and such so the name's a little bit ridiculous i really love the shade quest though i was randomly swatching these at sephora a bit ago and I had no real interest to, to, to even like adding them to my loves list on Sephora. But oh my gosh, the shade Quest, it is this beautiful, interesting rosy brown, a little bit cool, a little bit warm. Sephora describes it as a caramel beige. I would probably agree. I would say it has a little bit more rosy in it though. Like it looked pretty. It looked really, really pretty and really, really special. However, of course, I'm gonna know by. I don't wanna purchase items right now. So what I was going to use in its place is my Glossier Swiss Miss Balm.com from last holiday season, which was limited edition, but good news, Glossier has not only decided to bring back the Hot Cocoa Balm.com along with the Cookie Butter Balm.com from, that one was from like two holiday seasons ago. Glossier also made the wisest choice to make these available in the original formula, which is awesome. So if you've ever wanted them or want to re-up re on them, definitely go get those. I love both those products. I love that formula. I would probably pick up Cookie Butter if I wasn't on a no-buy, but I am on a no-buy, so I will not be getting it this time, which is A-OK. -okay. Anyway, 
I was going to use my hot cocoa Swiss Miss bomb back home from last year. However, I think I left it. I can't find it anywhere, but I have a sneaking suspicion that it's in the pocket of my denim jacket that I left at work yesterday, which I just also realized in looking for the bomb that I left the jacket at work too. So that's fun for me. I'll get that tomorrow. But since I can't use that, I think I'm going to use Glossier Pony. I do think it's not as similar to the... Oh. I do think it's not as similar to the lip oil as the balm.com would be. This is more of a lipstick balm hybrid. The balm, I think, would not be a formula dupe at all for the oil, gloss, whatever it is thing, but kind of have more of that sheer texture. This is a little bit more pigmented, um, and I'm not sure the color is as close as the balm the hot cocoa balm would be but it might be actually i haven't compared any of these side by side so who knows but i'm gonna use glossier pony yeah this i like pony okay um i kind of wish i got when i bought this i kind of wish i had just gotten cachet or trench or something else it's a little too pink for me it goes on a little bit too pink i wish i had more grungy brown and i think i can confidently say i like the shade of quest better there's a lot a lot more of that spiced brown in it. So we've done it. I have duped all of the products or shopped my stash for all the products that I may have bought if I wasn't on a no-buy and if I was purchasing this year from the Sephora sale. I am not though and I'm happy I'm not. I'm happy. This is gonna be the first Sephora sale I've skipped in at least two, maybe three years. I'm really proud of myself for that. I'm really excited to get through the sale without buying something. Um, obviously we have ways to go, but I have faith in myself. I have faith that I will stay strong on the snow by journey. And I feel really good right now about it. I think even if you are planning on buying something from the Sephora sale, shopping your stash is a great idea. I think it can help you decide, will I like this color of product? Do I need this product? Could I maybe not get this, but I do think I see a need for this. I think challenging yourself a little before you make a purchase is always a good idea and going to your stash, making sure you're not buying any exact dupes, unless you enjoy doing that, then go ahead and do that. I think it is, um, it, it's never a bad idea. It's never a bad idea and it can be fun. You can rediscover some favorites maybe. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Again, please give this video a like. It helps me a lot. Comment, um, would love to hear from y'all. Subscribe if you did. I mean, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, you are rare, so you should maybe just go ahead and join. Join the little, Little clove room fam. We'll work on that. I don't know about that phrasing. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Um, and good luck out there in the Sephora sale if you are in a participating country, region, whatnot. Um, it can be overwhelming. Bye, y'all.